wow, let me just... <sighs> All right. Church, congratulations. Yeah. I know we've been clapping. We're going to keep clapping, right? God's good. He's faithful. Hold on. Hold on. We'll get to the clapping here in a second. But I want, I want you to hear this. I am so thankful for the opportunity to pastor you and to pastor this church. And I truly am so grateful for 10 years of what God has done. And I, I'm saying congratulations to you. And I'm thanking you for your faithfulness, whether it's one day or whether it's 10 years. But I also want to be very clear who I am most thankful to today, who is the most faithful. Is God Almighty. So, Father, this morning, as we even begin this moment, God, it is a holy one. It is a precious one. God, 10 years celebrating not us, but you. It is your faithfulness, Lord. What God is like our God? No one. And so this morning, we exalt your name above every single thing today. It's in the name of Jesus that we say, amen. 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 Now you can clap. God is good. Okay. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, we're taking it back to the OG Old Testament right here today. Since, we're, since we, you know, we had some of our OG members, and we're going to go Deuteronomy right here. And this is what Moses writes, what God tells Moses to write. And he says to his people, he says, don't forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. In other words, you guys, don't forget. Don't forget how amazing God is. Don't forget what He's done. I love how David writes, In Psalm 71, King David, he's coming to the end of his life and he says, Since my youth, God, you've taught me. And to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation. Your mighty acts to all who are to come. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you, God? Who's like you? I want you to hear this. Oh, I'm all about you being reminded of God's faithfulness. We need that. But you know what else is important in this moment is those coming behind us, seeing that you and I serve a faithful God, a God who has moved miraculously time and time and time again that the God that you're putting your trust in is the same God that they can put their trust in God is in fact faithful and that's why we worship and it is also why we remember it's also why God even commanded he commands us to be celebratory he commands us to be joyful do you know that like you're commanded to have joy isn't that a weird thing to think about no, no, no. It's not an option. You must be. It's like you're going you're gonna to do this and you're going to like it. Right? Right? This is one of those like parent moments, but from God to be joyful. And so God institutes all these festivals, all these feasts. Excuse me. He institutes the Passover. He institutes these corporate moments of celebration. Why? So that God's people would remember his faithfulness, that they would be joyful and that they would be a light to the nation. Amen? Amen. So today, it's a little bit of a different Sunday today. Today is more of a testimony Sunday. It's more of a remembrance and celebrate moment today. We're we're just going to go down the line. We're going to remember what God has done. And then we're going to have Pastor David, who was my church planting coach. He's going to lead us in communion. And Pastor Keith and Jennifer are going to set the table for a little bit of the next 10 years for us. Because we are not done. 
We're not done. Yes, sir. God's still moving. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So throughout this portion, I'm going to have a little call and response. So you didn't grow up that way. You're about to catch up. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say this is who we are. And when I do, your opportunity then is to say, and this is who we are. Guys, with me. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is who we are. And this is what we do. Let's practice this. This is who we are. This is what we do. This is who we are. This is what we do. You already, it feels good, doesn't it? Just feels good to say it. So here we go. A little over 10 years ago, the very first coffee in Kennesaw, Georgia, not of all time, but of mine, <laughs> took place with the one and only ultimate OG member of High Point Church, and that would be the one and only Josh Anderson. Some of you know Josh, right? Some of you know he, he literally his company just helped build and engineer the, the new park just down the street. He's been here the whole time, right? And where, well, we were like 12 years old, right? <laughs> We were like 12, dreaming about a church, right, over, over breakfast at Jay Christopher's Diner. Is it possible? Could God want to? Right? And, and, and so it began. And we began driving. I began to drive from Orlando, Florida, every month, every two months, right? And I would meet up with Josh. And that was the original kind of moment that took place in the church. And then over the next several months, Amy and I eventually moved here, and we had our very first interest meeting for the church in our house, right? We didn't really come with a ton of cash. We didn't come with people, right? But we used our relational skills and, and faith and invited anybody who had a pulse to our home, right? And seven people showed up. Yes, they did. There's Josh Anderson. You might possibly recognize a few other people. Jasmine Shervington. Where's Kellen? We don't know, right? Is he taking the picture? Maybe he is, right? One of our children, and that's why it's so unfocused, right? Right? And so there's seven adults, probably a couple cockroaches in the corner. We're counting them, right? You need all the faith you can get when you're planning a church, right? Seven people at that interest meeting. And you could just begin to feel it. Yeah. You know, something's happening with seven people in our living room. And so what began with that interest meeting began a, a journey of faith. And I began to preach on a stool right in front of my television. Right? And college students began to come. Adults and families began to come. And also, um, parents of some of their kids began to come because obviously there's a church that's forming in this kind of weird guy's living room. I need to make sure that my children are not a part of some cult or snake handling weirdo faction of people. And hence, Joe and Sandy Mashburn showed up, right, to make sure, right, that my children aren't in some weird thing. And Larry and Alicia Day began to show up. And all of a sudden, some parents are there. And it's beginning to capture a little bit of momentum. A little bit of steam, right? And we were a people who were full of faith, who desired to see God reach people to make disciples. This is who we are. This is who we are. What do we do? We trust God, don't we? We are full of faith. And we have a passion to make disciples. This is who we are. And this is what we do. Crazy enough to believe that Jesus changes everything. And so with that, we began to preach in the living room. We didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> All I knew is I got to teach this Bible. And the very first person who's ready for deployment, right, in the military, Trent Lindsay, decides, I, I, I've heard enough. 
is I'm ready to put my faith in Jesus. And we get a horse trough, right, to fill up with water. It is snowing outside. It is absolutely bitter cold. You remember the snow apocalypse, right? And, 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 and outside, as it's snowing, I don't even have a picture of it, the very first person puts their faith in Jesus and is baptized in our very backyard. Yeah. Amazing. Life change. And only somebody that's getting deployed would be crazy enough to get baptized as it's snowing outside. It was perfect. Right? Tough. Rawr. This is who we are. We moved out of my living room. And we moved into my neighborhood clubhouse. And it was absolutely the most horrific environment in the history of the world. Oh, look at that. It's just terrible. You want to, it's just awful. Wicker furniture? Who let this happen? Okay? My, the whole kids' ministry is now meeting at my house, right? And all the parents would drive about 150 yards down the street to this clubhouse. You know why we did that? Because it was 50 bucks a month, baby, right? And when you're a church planner, sometimes you're like, you know what? We can make this work, right? We can do it, right? $50 a month, right? With wicker furniture, it was a disaster, right? But we told, we told everybody, don't invite your friends to this. Invite them to the launch service, but don't invite them here. I don't want them to see this, okay? This is just for us, okay? This is insider baseball in this moment, right? But we were full of faith. We were ready for what God was going to do. We were expecting, and yes, I made a decision on a budget for 50 bucks a month, but guess what? God still begins adding people to this church, and all of the sudden... That horse trough just kept getting filled with water time and time again in the backyard. And we see Catherine Lowe Day, right, getting baptized, right? We see Megan Wood. We see, I can't even remember who else got baptized that day. Megan Bergwall getting baptized. We're seeing people put their faith in Christ, renew their decision to follow Jesus. And God is growing his church because we, 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 we are a people passionate to see God move because this is who we are and this is what we do. We use our faith. We trust God. We expect him to move because that's who God is. And because that's who God is, this is who we are. And it is what we do. We launched our first service here after moving out of that crazy clubhouse. We had our first service here. And it wasn't too long, right? I, I, again, my, my timing is really bad. But along the way, you're right, you've got High Point Church. My name is Andy. It's easy for things to get a little confusing at times for people because there's North Point Church and Andy Stanley, right? Only one of the most mega church pastors in America of all time. And we still, from time to time, get people looking for him and they find me instead. Let them know there's a new Andy in town, baby. There's a new Andy in town. Look out, right? <laughs> And who wanders through our doors? But people who've become dear friends of ours, Davis and Val Burnett, right? Who live in another nation of Atlanta right now, right? But, but here you have, right, uh, two people, right? Yes, looking for Andy Stanley and looking for North Point, right? Showing up at our church. Two broken people who God made whole, who brought to saving faith. I'll never forget having Mexican food. I can't even remember the name of the restaurant. Papacitos. Okay. A lot of, a lot of Jesus has happened over Mexican food. I want you to know. Okay. Say it again. Mm. But I'll never forget. You know, talking to Davis, talking to Val, 
right? And you have those moments where, you know, I remember Val sitting there. She's there to support Davis, right? And all of a sudden, the, the, the tune changes. Well, what's God doing in your life? Well, I'm fine, but are you fine? God's chasing. You, maybe you were running away. Maybe you both were. But let me tell you something. God is chasing you down. My paraphrase. Over the next weeks and over the next months, and my timing isn't going to be right, but we saw two people who, who were broken on the inside. God, God in His grace he brought healing to hearts and brought an amazing family together, not just the two of them, but their daughter Emily as well. And God has done extraordinary things. Amazing what God can do, what God will do. God's not finished either. Their story might be similar to your story, right? Where you're rolling in, walking in, thinking, you know, you're on your kind of last breath, last ditch moment here. And I'm here to tell you that we serve a God who is in fact faithful and that he is miraculous and he is moving and he is not finished. Don't give up hope. We serve a great God. Amen. We trust Him. Yes. We give Him our all. This is who we are. Yes. This is what we do. You have Brian and Allison Rouse. Not exactly on the same timetable as Val and Davis. More on the recent side. Coming into the church. One trying to grapple with how do I reconcile the pain and loss of a brother? Loss of a family member. God, can I trust you? Are you real? Are you good? You got another spouse who just didn't grow up really with any kind of foundation. Beginning to hear the gospel and beginning, it, it, it's getting on the inside, right? And it begins to do what only the gospel can do. And it begins to change and transform. And, and while, the, 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 I don't know where the picture is and all the encyclopedia of pictures that we have, right? But there's an amazing moment where we see the two of them getting baptized. And you see the silhouette of their three boys watching. Mom and dad. Put their faith in Jesus. Because when God is moving, guess what? He's not just moving in your life. It's a legacy. It's a family. It's a, it's a whole, it's a dynasty, right, that's being changed. It's a people. It's not just an individual person. It's not just you. God is faithful. He's great. He's moving. He's changing not just individual lives. He's changing entire families. This is who we are, and this is what we do. Come on, put your hands together. Yes. This is who we are, and this is what we do. We've got teenagers, too many to count right now. Rascals <laughs> coming together on Sunday nights, going to conferences together, putting their faith in Jesus, deciding to follow Christ, sometimes apart even from mom and dad. There are, there are teenagers that come to this church whose parents are not interested in coming to this church. But yet... Their teens are stirred and moved by what they believe is true and real. And they're hearing the gospel getting preached and taught and shared over ice cream and pizza, chicken strips from Publix and all the things. Gospel. Woo! Yes, praise God. Right over some good food and guess what? The temperature's rising and who's ready to put their faith in Jesus and be forever changed. And we see teens, even my own children, putting their faith in Christ. One of my favorite stories, that's not even really a story. It's just an, it's just an is. Or the amount of texts and phone calls that Amy and I get from teens asking to come to church early. 
just so they can help set up, just so they can help be a part of it. Would you pick us up, right? And no, their mom and dad would take them too, but they're like, I want to get there early. Mom and dad are like, listen, if you want to go early, that's fine, right? Go be, a, be, a, be my guest, right? <laughs> right? Well, I mean, it's great. But there's something going on where they're like, I, there's something electric. Lord, I sense your presence and your, your, your ministry and something, and I want to just be around it. This is who we are. This is what we do. Or it's the most recent stories. It's the Daniel Russo. So I don't even know where he's sitting, right? There he is. You might affectionately refer to him as the soccer guy. Right, as some of you have. And he's coming up with me at Kennesaw Elementary School for meet and greets, right, giving his time, right? He's hearing the gospel, he's serving, he's working, you know, at a, at rehabilitation. We got things happening, right, with a little bit of the soccer team there at Atlanta United. It's an amazing little Bible study happening at, in the heart of, of Marietta at Cool Beans Cafe, right? And every time I turn around, there's a new player that they've drugged to this cafe, right? And we're talking and we're kind of dreaming and the gospel's being preached and we're trying to do the purple book, but I'm just sweating in, you know, the cafe and I'm trying to do line by line. I can't do it, you know, and I'm just half preaching and, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing moment and here he is, ready to be baptized, soon to be in the next several weeks. And you've got to love it when a former teammate comes in town and instantly recognizes that this person's life is not the same. Who does that? Jesus does that. Jesus changes everything. This is who we are. And this is what we do. We believe for Jesus to change everything. You've got stories in our church like Candy and Kenyatta Baylor who, who were unable to get pregnant for four to five years. We're laboring and trying and laboring and trying and just nothing happened. There was a prayer service that took place here at this very school. And somebody, a guest preacher is brought in who begins to pray and has a, a word of knowledge supernaturally and brings them up and begins to pray prophetically that God would heal and and change everything and what takes place in the months to come after four to five years of losing children and not being able to get pregnant and being told by doctors basically this is a one in a million shot a one in a million chance here and bam what takes place God moves and a pregnancy takes place not once but two times as God heals and there are so many stories that I can't even recount of God restoring marriages. Some of you have marriages that have been, been, been restored by the very power and presence of God, not because of who we are, but because of who He is. Yeah. Marriages that have been changed and children who've come back to the Lord. And even during COVID, right, we've got people who, who are coming to the neighborhood pool to be baptized. Right? Because we weren't meeting here. Where were we meeting? A field. We were meeting outside in a field for nearly 18 months, church. Do you hear that? For Westerners, that is a death sentence for a church. We met once a month in a field and the rest online. And yet God still preserved and, and held us together. And he did it. And look at the church that still prevails, that God is still working in and still moving in. It should have been the end, but it wasn't the end. In fact, in many ways, it was a brand new beginning. This is who we are. This is what we do. Going just a little long. You knew I was going to. It's the stories of, you know, seminary, right? I'm in my third year now. Home stretch. Praise God. 
but I stuck around, you know, this past year. And, and I shared some of the service. Some of you weren't here, but I, it's worth acknowledging how God moves. I, I, I flew to another island after uh, seminary class in Manila, which is where our headquarters is for the seminary we're part of with every nation. And I'm preaching at the church, and you got to know these churches in the Philippines that, that are part of our ministry, they're big churches, okay? They're big. And I'm preaching on a Sunday, and there's two white people in the entire audience of this massive church, two Caucasians. And I'm preaching my guts out. And these guys beeline for the stage after church. One guy in particular, his name is Tom. He says, you know, uh, here today I lost my faith. I lost it. He said, you probably, uh, you're from Atlanta? I said, yeah. He said, well, you're probably not even familiar with Kennesaw, George R. <laughs> I said, it's funny, keep going. <laughs> he said, I was the principal at North Cobb Christian. North Cobb Christian High School. He said, I helped start the school. He said, you ever even heard of that? I just sat there. I just looked at him. I said, that school is five minutes from my home. Kennesaw is where I live. Wow. I'm sharing the gospel. And you're talking about having lost your faith. You're one of two Caucasians in this entire church here today. I'm on an island halfway around the world. Do you think that God might be inviting you to rediscover your faith today? <sighs> yes. The other white guy. I can't even remember his name. Other white guy. We'll just call him that. Other white guy. He says, oh, he's from Kennesaw. He said, you probably, never, you probably never heard where I'm from. He said, I'm from Florida. I said, oh, tell me more. He said, I'm from Winter Garden, Florida. Winter Garden, where I used to live. I got two white people in a, on an island in the middle of the Philippines with hundreds on hundreds on hundreds of Filipinos, okay? And two white people coming down front, and one is from where I currently live, and the other is from where I used to live, right? Of all the things, do you think that God might be writing another chapter to some of y'all's stories, that he is on the move, that who could arrange such a thing? A one in a bajillion chance. No, God does the extraordinary. He does the miraculous. God is at work. And yes, in the same way that he was writing that story and their story, don't you give up. Don't you quit on this God. Oh, some of you might be here today at the 10-year celebration and you might be thinking that's great for this church. But a church is filled with people. It's filled with stories, individual moments of how God is working and moving. He's not done. Not only here, but with you. This is who we are. We trust God, don't we? We believe God. To change everything. I'll close with this because the Lord knows I'll never close if I don't say that I'm going to close. Now I have to close. I got a text message. Some of you might know Ned, who sits in the back row. He's from Ghana. Where is he right now? In Ghana, right? He's there for the next several weeks, and he's coming back. He texts me at 4 this morning. He says, hello, Pastor Andy. Great morning to you and the High Point family. We are so grateful to God for a 10-year milestone. Of course, I love this, of course he has been faithful. I ask for more grace strength, and wisdom for the days ahead. We will live to see the mighty hand of God in the next 10 plus years. 
And I'm so excited to be part of the next journey of High Point. Here's what he says, and then we'll clap. I sit with him over coffee. This is just a couple weeks ago. He's got his, you know, Ghanaian accent, and we're talking about reaching Kennesaw State University. He says, you know, he's a grad student. He says, I'm here, but I want you to know, Pastor, that I'm not just here for an education. He said, I believe that God has brought me here to reach this campus to make disciples and to see God move. Yeah. Amazing. And what's God doing? He's writing not only your story, but the ne- he's beginning. He's writing those next chapters, even of our story. God, I, I'm, I'm excited to make disciples. This is who we are. And this is what we do. Come on, somebody. Now, I'll read it again, and then we're going to transition to a time of communion today. Since my youth, you've taught me. And to this day, I declare your marvelous deeds. Whether it's healing, whether it's transforming you from the inside out, saving your soul, bringing a marriage back together, bringing a child back to the forefront of faith, we declare your marvelous deeds. And even when we are old and gray, Lord, don't forsake us. Lord, till we declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come, your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things. Who is like you, Lord?